Rub up your engines! Today we got a giant orange Ram 1500, 4x4, four four. got over 160,000 miles. And now he's the second owner, he got it from his father, so he knows the history of the vehicle. Now you can see the guys taking care. They wanted it to stand out, his father was a Harley man, so it kind of fit in. It's got all those mileage, over 160, and it's got the Hemi V8, so. Yeah, a lot of them will get that horrible Hemi tick, because if you idle them all the time, the cam doesn't get enough lubrication, and it starts wearing out, but he changes his oil every 5,000 miles religiously. And does this one make noise? No. Does it burn oil? No. If you take care of things, they can last a long time. He's got the ZF transmission, made by the Austrians. Sprechen Sie Deutsch? They sell millions of those ZF transmissions to all kinds of companies because they're excellent transmissions. You take care of them like he did, it still shifts like a dream. It's not one of those crazy, modern ones made in the United States that skips gears and has problems. They're really well made. They've used them for quite a time in Chrysler products, actually. He had to change the serpentine belt because it was worn, and he had to change the plastic blade because the radiator still got a mechanical fan. The plastic just cracked. Yeah, it's so much cheaper than me, but it just bolts on and off. It's no big deal. Well, he added the wheels. Really sets it off more, too, the orange and black. All right, we'll climb inside. Does have the wheelless remote. Start her up. Starts right up. Does have a great sound. I'm talking about the exhaust. <laughs> These Hemi's do have a nice sound. 160,000 miles. Now, of course, it's going to use gas. It's a big vehicle. You got to expect that. Now, because of the ZF transmission, all its speed, he can get 19 miles a gallon on a highway if he's driving conservative. But in the city, he says, it gets crap. He doesn't want to know. <laughs> and I don't blame him. It's a big four-wheel drive truck with a big old Hemi engine, it's gonna eat up gas. You can drive in conservatively on a highway, still get about 19. He took the beauty cover off and threw it away. It's not a smart idea to heat soak plastic injectors, the manifold. When he's done, if he drives it hard, he'll prop the hood open a little if it's not raining outside to let the heat escape. Smart move, you don't wanna hold heat down. Especially with all the plastic crap and stuff nowadays. Now he wants to see what kind of shape it's in, so we're gonna hook up the old computer. Automatic scan, you'll see. It's got 160,714 miles. Power chain control is normal, but transmission module has a failure. Let's see what that is. Read trouble code. Lost communication with steering control module. Often these things will get a little glitch to them. And as per usual, with car this old, who knows what's been done to it. The father didn't buy it new, he bought it used, and then the son got it from him. So we're gonna erase it. Brakes has a failure. Let's see what that is. Lost communication with steering angle sensor. That's inside here. Might be a problem in there. Who knows? Well, we're gonna erase it. Sometimes they just do that when the battery gets bad, so we'll erase that too. It's got a problem with the driver door module. We'll see what that is. Probably more crazy codes. Door module internal missing calibration. Window control circuits short to ground. As we can see, all the windows are working. So we'll just clear all those codes and now we'll look at the raw engine data. We'll start it back up. Ooh, I love that sound. And as you can see here, we have 245 bits of live data. That's a lot of information. The good thing they're all blue, they're all good colored so far, it's color coded. Date cylinder, you can see the cylinder width pulses. They're all relatively close. You're always going to get some off. It's never going to be perfectly balanced on a car with 160,000 miles. And you know, this is a modern car. It's got a very fancy coolant system. You can analyze that. You can even check the active grill. It's got grills that open and close with a fan speed to help cool the engine. There's the active valve system. If you have a problem in the engine, this has no problems. But if there was, you can use this to figure out what's wrong. And look at this. You can even read the AC high side pressure without putting gauges on. Sure makes analysis a lot quicker. You don't have to get intrusive. You're getting the data without having to hook stuff up. Create leaks that often hooking a gauge up will create a leak. If you look at the short term adaptation, it's pretty good. It's subtracting a little fuel and adding a little fuel. It's not exactly the same, but it's such a small percentage. Look, it's, it's almost perfect at zero. You can see the long term adaptation is also low. 1.56, 2.34. For a vehicle to only add that tiny amount of fuel, it's got 160,000 miles. This thing's been taken care of. I know, I am not a big Dodge fan, but this one 
has been taken care of and nothing major is broken original engine original tranny it is a zf austrian transmission now realize that dodge does not make the transmissions they make the engines but the Germans make the transmission. Decent backup camera. Maybe I won't hit the neighbor's mailbox again. Not a big fan of the electronics, but hey, that's how they make them. It is a ZF transmission, so the Germans pretty much know what they're doing. We're way up in the air. We got plenty of clearance. Out in the country where this truck belongs. We'll get to our little drag strip here. Nobody behind us that's going to smash into us yet. Where do these guys get out of the way? Because they're going awful slow. <laughs> All right, now here we go. Yes, it definitely has power. But that sound. Who needs a radio with that? Man, we turn that off. <laughs> we don't need classic rock. It's classic rock of its own. And that ZF transmission. Do you feel it shuddering? No. Shifting? No. It's a phenomenal transmission. It was made for speed shifting. And this, since it was taken care of, still shifts like a dream. The engine runs like a clock. If you take care of a well-made one, you realize one thing. This thing was made here in the US of A. This was not made in Mexico. 160,000 miles, it's got an awful lot of life left in it. Yeah, it's a Chrysler product. But then again, the transmission isn't. <laughs> Look, they always make pretty good V8 engines. Aside from the cams eating up if you idle them too much, you can always rebuild them too if you want. But the transmission in this thing being Austrian, it's a phenomenal transmission. You don't have to worry about it. An orange Ram with 160,000 miles, and I like it. And it's not just because the guy's an ex soldier could probably beat the heck out of me if I said nasty things. He wants the truth told about it. He's taking care of it. And yeah, it eats up a lot of gas if you drive it fast. Any big vehicle will. He wants to keep it forever because it was his father's truck. It still runs great. Original engine, original transmission. Unfortunately, you want to buy something like this, you're going to have to go into the past and get it. These older ones, they were solid made, especially with the ZF transmission. This thing can run and run and run. It doesn't have the lifter tick because he changed the oil a lot and doesn't idle. You buy one of these, don't sit idling with the AC on. Turn it off. They weren't made for idling. Treat it like a race car. Only drive it at regular and high speeds. Don't sit there idling all the time. They're not made for that anyway. If you change the oil every five, change the fluids like he does every 30,000 miles. You could end up with something like this that is a great truck, even though it's a Dodge. And here's some bonus questions and answers. Well, now Volvo is splitting from the European car agency, ACEA, over climate disputes, saying, eh, yeah, they're not really going to follow the ideas these guys came up with. Stellantis already said they're not going to, and the Germans are starting to whine about, hey, we can't make everything electric. You can't do that that easy. You're going to lose a bunch of jobs. So, as I predicted, the political bull of Oh, we're going to be electric by blah, blah, blah. It's exactly that, a bunch of bull. When the wind starts blowing in the opposite direction, guess what? The politicians start bending in the opposite direction. And here's what Volvo says. You get double speak because lawyers are involved, but they say, and I quote, We have concluded that Volvo cars' sustainability strategy and ambitions are not fully aligned with ACAA's positioning. We therefore believe it's better to take a different path for now. All right, so Volvo's starting to back out of this stuff. People have these agreements. I mean, let's face it, agreements are generally a bunch of legal mumbo jumbo that often mean nothing, especially if they're talking about something like 2030, which is, of course, what? Eight years from now. <laughs> That's a long time. And already they're starting to back out. They say, we regret to see them leave. Of course, they are bureaucrats, right? What else are they going to say? It's like when a company fires someone and they say, well, they left the company to pursue personal ambition. Yeah, in other words, they were fired. Everybody thinks this stuff's going to be electric by 2030. Turn out the lights on them. That's that's what I say. <laughs> Because it ain't gonna happen. Can Auto say, is it okay to drive without a muffler in my vehicle? I got an 04 Honda CRV and rust didn't fell off. Is it dangerous? I don't want to pay for a new exhaust. I'm good until my inspection of February of 24. Now the car will run. The only thing a muffler does is muffle sound. That's what's called a muffler. So your neighbors are gonna hate you. You're gonna be making so much noise. I don't know. You rev it up, right? If you wanna, at least you don't wanna buy a muffler, go to an exhaust. 
exhaust system shop and just have them put a pipe that comes out the back so the fumes at least will be going behind you. Then you could drive it around, but it could still run perfectly fine. I've known guys that ran without mufflers for years and their cars are still going okay. You want to make sure that the exhaust is exiting behind you. So you can have a guy just weld a pipe on that goes the whole way to the back so it comes out the back. That's why exhaust pipes are on the back. So it blows behind the car and doesn't get inside the cabin and poison you. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.